Polieta is a partner at Home Team Ventures. Um, Home Team Ventures is focused on bringing affordable home building methods to market. She also leads R&D at New Story. Um, we featured New Story in a previous ICF, and that was uh, really impressive to see the uh, the 3D printed community in Mexico uh, that you guys developed. So very excited uh, to meet you here and to uh, have you share your current uh, thinking, vision, and work with us. Thank you, Martin. I'm very excited to be here, especially because we've been presenting over the past two years at the IC forums. A little bit differently, though. So we are presenting about new stories work the past two IC forums, and this year I'll be presenting about home team ventures. So just for a little bit of context, in 2019 when we presented, we shared that we actually permitted the very first 3D printed home in history by partnering with Icon and New Story. So this is an example of the very first 3D printed home permitted in the US. And we were doing this for the homelessness crisis. So how can we use an emerging technology first for social impact and for the housing crisis? Last year, we presented about how we actually brought this printer to Mexico to 3D print the very first housing community in the world. So this was incredibly exciting because again, we're bringing an emerging technology first for the bottom billion, for those who truly need it more. So it was an incredible case study that we were able to do with New Stories R&D program. So the New Story R&D program had about 50 plus R&D partnerships with early stage startups, just like Icon, but also academic partners and industry leaders who have innovative technologies in construction that we believe if we adapted to actually use for housing, we could be lowering cost and increasing speed. So that's why we're so interested in industrialized construction specifically because it always meets those two buckets of lowering costs and increasing speed. So to give you some context on New Story Charity first, for those of you who might not know, we started through Y Combinator in 2015 with a single focus of pioneering solutions to end homelessness. So what that means to us is how do we bring in construction innovations first for impact and to address the housing crisis? We know that with current construction methods, we'll never be able to build the amount of supply that we need to house everyone. So over the past five years, we did true customer discovery. We worked with federal governments in Central and South America to build communities ourselves, to truly understand the main pain points in housing and what kinds of solutions and innovative solutions like industrialized construction we could apply to these barriers. So over the past five years, we've built about 25 housing communities and every single community is super interesting because we use them almost like a sandbox of innovation. We partner with an innovator like Icon and do a proof of concept in a new story community so we could test and iterate quickly in a market that's usually easier, has less barriers of entry, it's quicker to adopt the technology and it's cheaper. And then we could share our successes and our mistakes. So Martin before shared about learning from other people's mistakes, but also sharing the successes. How do we engage other governments, NGOs, nonprofits, AEC firms to be using these technologies. So with ICON specifically, it was our best case study of how we partner with an R&D partner. And the main difference with ICON compared to our other partners is that we invested in them at the earliest stage. So what that means is that we were actually their very first check in the door, because when we saw what ICON was developing, we realized that there's a huge impact that we could have by bringing 3D printing to the housing crisis. So we wanted to have a seat at the table. We wanted to adapt their technology to use for housing specifically. And if you look up ICON today, just two years later, you'll see that's part of their mission to focus on the housing crisis. So this is truly an impactful case study because it shows a double bottom line that we are approaching. So on one end, we're bringing in major impact by bringing in technology for impact. But on another end, we're also growing a business. We're looking at the capital side of things. So by investing in ICON, we were able to do a proof of concept in a new story community in Mexico by developing those relationships with governments, adapting their technology as we are home builders and understand the pain points that we need to use a technology in rural Mexico. But we were also able to bring major press to them. For example, having over 1 billion impressions online and an Apple TV documentary. If you haven't seen it yet, if you go on Apple TV+, Plus, there is a docu-series called Home and we're featured in episode nine. And I'll walk through the journey of how we were able to achieve this. And if we look at the finances, today Icon is valued at over 150 million and they have partnerships with NASA, Fannie Mae, Big, HUD. So this truly showcases what a double bottom line approach looks like. And it was the genesis of us actually branching off of New Story to start Home Team Ventures. 
a VC fund that's addressing the housing crisis by investing in early stage startups that are looking at the issues of cost, speed, and quality. So construction technology that we could bring into the housing space. And the number one reason we started Home Team Ventures is very similar to New Story, which is that we look at the numbers. We look at the fact that today there's 1.6 billion people in the world who don't have access to adequate housing. And in less than 10 years, the UN is projecting that this number is gonna be 3 billion. So with current construction methods, you all in the audience know more than anyone, we're not able to build this many houses in this much time. We need to bring in disruptive technologies to be looking at these issues of cost and speed. This is also coupled by the fact that the construction industry is one of the least digitized in any industry vertical. It's actually right above farming for least digitized. And the reason is because it only invests about 0.5% of its value into R&D. Even though the construction industry is one of the largest markets in the world, it represents 13% of global GDP. It's really because of the culture and construction, the we've always done it this way mindset that we need to change. So what we are focusing on at home team with these founders by investing in them is that we want to cut housing costs by half. This is a very ambitious goal, but we truly believe that we could achieve that if we look at the kinds of companies we want to invest into. We're going to be hyper-focused in founders that are using construction technologies, whether it's material science, hardware, software, machine learning, computer vision, that are reducing the cost of construction and increasing speed all while sustaining quality of building. So the way that we will be tracking this over our fund life, we only launched in August of 2020, but we've already invested in four companies, is that we are gonna be breaking up the construction value chain into different buckets, like you could see here in this graph. And in every single bucket, we wanna invest in about five different companies and we'll be tracking their metrics against cost and time. So how do every single one of our portfolio companies actually address bringing down cost of their specific bucket and increasing speed. So I'll go over one example. And then if you'd like to add more information, I urge you to look at our website at hometeam.vc. So the example I'll cover is Airworks, the very first one that's listed here. So Airworks is trying to address the issue of surveying and actually completely eliminate this process. So we all know that in any construction project, whether it's a bridge, whether it's a high rise or a home, we need to do surveying the land first. Why I love this graph is because it highlights the construction industry as a whole. In the 1900s, surveying looks the exact same that it looks like today. The only difference between both pictures is that one has color and the other one doesn't. We desperately need to change the way that we're doing things. So what Airworks is doing is they take um, aerial mapping using drone footage and LIDAR scanning. And with their program, their software, they convert this automatically into aerial mapping data. And so they're able to produce line work that has component information in 2D and 3D of the different components you see in this aerial mapping using machine learning and computer vision. So in this graph, you're seeing the different colors. Those represent if it's either vegetation, water, buildings, utilities, bridges. And this is what we're able to do in a matter of just minutes because they're using machine learning. And so why we're specifically interested in this, again, coming from news story and wearing our hat of home builders, we understand the pain points of surveying and what that means to housing. So this is an example of the kind of surveys that we get in Haiti. So a few uh, months ago, when we were able to travel, we had to go back to Haiti several times because this is the kind of results we were getting from the surveyors. So it says not to scale. We only have information of the lot size. It's not necessarily accurate. We don't have information of the lots of the homes or elevations, if there is any kind of vegetation, topography. So this really delays our process of being able to start the housing projects. It's a lot of time and it's a lot of costs. So as soon as we invested in Airworks, we connected them to the governments in Panama with the Panama Authority Canal and also ANATI that works on land titles for families. And we were doing a pilot project with them by being able to do land titles for 700 families. So Airworks is gonna be mapping out 115 hectares of land and providing these aerial mapping surveys that we could do land titles for 700 families. And this graph shows you what it looks like to do the traditional method versus using Airworks. So in the Anati team in Panama, they have a group of eight people that usually works on land titles. If they were to focus on just this one project, it would take them three years to accomplish this. And providing land titles is the very first step to housing accessibility. Using Airworks, it'll take them roughly one to two months and it's reducing about 30% of costs. 
So it's just one example of the many we're going to have over the next few years of how we're going to be providing portfolio value add to these companies and bringing in technologists into the impact space. So if you have any questions about home team, you're interested in investing in the fund or you're a founder yourself that wants to pitch home team, please feel free to reach out to me at julietta at hometeam.bc or you could check out our website. Thank you.